think this is one of the best red velvet songs. Yeah, and you know what is the like visceral difference? I've said this a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand more. This bass player is killing. It, a real bass player. This is Red Velvet's late 2016 release, it's called Russian Roulette, and starting with this song. So Red Velvet originally had a red side and a velvet side, and the red side was more poppy and upbeat, and the velvet side was more R&B and laid back. Well, they combined the two sides. And uh, in the music video, the girls are trying to kill each other over oh. a dude. Over a dude? You know, yeah, you're So basically, we're on no. Yep. Lift off, and three, two, one. <laughs> I like how they're using their voices as percussion almost. Yeah. Ah, the chip two sounds. So good. Ooh. I dig the big synths. Edgy, bright timbers. Fat beat on those drums. And <laughs> you like your fat beats on you. I, I do you like fat bases. I do like these grooves. Yeah. Do you prefer fat bases or skinny bases? Um, I'm gonna have no comment. See, that's how you know there's a drop coming when the ascent occurs. Mm -hmm. Is this a minor? I don't think so. Well, now no, it's a major. I can't tell. I can't tell at all. I really like the aesthetic. It's kind of like a very playful, playful visual accompanied by like very playful audio. The chords are mostly less, like similar to other songs, but it's just a little crunchier, and that extra crunch makes it better. All right, like the tune's pretty cool. Yeah, the tune's okay. I don't know. It's the chorus and the verse have like the, an unbearable sameness. Oh, that's kind of true. It was like with the drum set was playing in like a beat that's totally associated with um, uh, like disco music, uh, specifically like in the 70s or like 80s. And that's reflected in the, in the film here. I mean, this is very 70s, 80s kind of style. Yeah, like how he's accenting the ends of the eighth notes and not the down beat. Yeah. Push through that. Yeah, that. Is that, what is that, a sharp four? It's one, two, sharp, two, three. Oh. If we're talking major. But no, if it's a minor, then we're talking sharp four. Gotcha. It's interesting in that it's never really established major or minor. Because they ended on an E flat major chord, and then it goes, it's like switching back and forth pretty constantly between E flat major and C minor. Oh, except that weird ass Whoa. minor three. Oh. Is this a bridge? They're like, they're doing like this acapella thing with the chords, but the. But there's also some weird stuff going on harmonically, which makes me think it's a bridge. I love how they just don't show us the aftermath. Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! What? Did you see that? They're all trying to kill those girls with the piano and just cheating all the skits. That would be you. <laughs> Jesus. It has like a game vibe to it. Like the, the, the synth. I don't even know like what sound that is. But it sounds like a video game, so it's kind of like they're like fighting each other in a video game. What a trip! Red Velvet's toying with my emotions. You know that I was actually just thinking um, that sort of like screechy. Uh -huh. um, it, it's kind of like that. It was that chip oh tune melody, but it turned really screechy. That actually reminds me of um, the Velvet Under. <laughs> The Red Velvet Underground. The Red Velvet Underground. <laughs> Gosh, they're so damn good! Yeah, man. Yeah, so thoughts on this one musically? Was it just thumbs up all around? I thought, you know, it it's it repeats itself enough times, but like the chords that they use has such a like it just the There's progression the itself chord. is fundamentally great. Wait, wait, wait. It's another Jeez. augmented bass chord, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is an augmented. It's um Fans are gonna hate me for this camera angle. <laughs> it's a G I'm dominant done. seven sharp five. Very typical jazz chord. Okay. G yeah, it's like G dominant seven. And then you had a bit of an augmented touch to it. Which is... Kevin, oh wait, do, do us a favor, just <laughs> I 
liked it. I like how they um, they had like their voices and they altered them to the rhythm and like used them. Like you assigned a voice, a, part, a key on the piano and you're like, voice, chord, instead of a piano. It was nice. Um, also, there were, there's like some chromatic movement in the chorus, I think. Da -da -da -da. And just kind of like the whole song, like, if they made the progression a little different, it could have sounded like really happy and cheery. But they didn't. There was like minor stuff in it, which still, it, it's still, yeah, the modal mixture, I guess. It still made it, um, like kind of happy and upbeat and like, oh yeah, um, oh yeah. But it wasn't like super peppy, oh my god. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think it's my least favorite of the Red Velvet songs that we've heard because what I liked so much about the other Red Velvet songs is that they kind of really like stood out. I didn't really think anything about that particularly stood out. I didn't dislike it. It didn't impress me as much as their other stuff that we've listened to. It, it lacked a little bit of the quirk that like mm -hmm. things like the giant cat um, and ice cream cake, you know, brought to the table. <laughs> I didn't really do it for me. I thought it was good. It was very techno. Yeah, it went on a little. It went on a little long. Like I think it could have been one chorus shorter. But I, I also it... think anything other than the same beat the entire time would have been nice. That is true. I thought. I thought the um, ah, beep beep beep. Like I, I, that's production that I appreciate. You know what I mean? Where they, they make it sound produced. Well, I thought it was really really cool how, like I mentioned before, the verse. Um, at least in the drums, because that's what obviously my ears draw to. Uh, it has a beat that's more uh, similar to like a rock beat or something like that, and because of that, it feels more open. Like the groove doesn't feel super choppy. And when they emphasize the in the chorus, like that disco beat, where they're emphasizing the downbeat with the upbeat, like on the hi hat, it gives it more of a like a, a pushing feeling, like they're on top of the beat. So it was a really nice contrast. Well, we're gonna go on to another playful song, except more musically interesting, more musically complex. This is called Rookie. This is Red Velvet's comeback in early 2017. And actually the song was originally a very polarizing song that many didn't know how to process. But after the first week of live stages, the song rose in the charts and became a hit, collecting nine wins on music shows and becoming one of the most successful girl group songs of the year. Damn. You'll see a weird flower guy in the music video. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the video I love director. Weird people. Fun fact: this song was composed by nine different people. What? Yeah. I, this better be fucking incredible. Ah, uh, beep beep beep. And try try. And we're live. <laughs> 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 Progression or four five progression, then they end on major one. It's like the Cole Porter thing. Live horns. Yeah. Real trouble playing and trouble playing. Sounds good. What? My eyes. <laughs> Jesus. What is going on? I like this part. This I don't want to listen to this anymore. <laughs> Okay, this part is good. We like this part. Here's why I don't like it. Is it never leaves the same register. They are always in the same register, and the only time they change is to go higher, and it's really annoying because they don't sustain notes. Okay, this is a song that I would listen to a lot in private and never tell anyone that I like it. Monastruck. I think this is one of the best Red Velvet songs. 
Yeah, and you know what is the like visceral difference? I've said this a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand more. This bass player is killing. It, a real bass player. This is like a little annoying, so I can understand why people didn't like it, but like I, I still don't, I don't not like it. I hate, I like, I'm like upset that I don't not like it. Is that a folk order? I was just gonna say, is it a book order? It sounds like a folk order. I think it might That's be. That's sick. It's like they took like a sustained pedal and just went click. True. It was crazy. Like you go from this huge buildup with like the brass and whatnot, and then all of a sudden it's just like. <laughs> good in the chorus and like yeah. whenever they're like so like sing talking all the instrumentals oh, yeah, are like working yeah, at it and exactly. they have this is really well thought out you can just tell that like, it just someone mixed. has been some work in the making it. it's mixed really well too like it's the balance is awesome yeah <laughs> I like the dark right there, yeah. Dude, I love that <laughs> I feel like you and me having so much fun right now <laughs> Oh, green screen. There it is. Oh, I like this. I like this. It's cool. I see like the behind the scenes a little bit at the very end of things. It's just like, take a bow. Mm -hmm. Look at all those balls. Who's got to clean up all those balls? Not them. Rip stage crew. That waving. You didn't wave back? So mean. What do you think of that overall musically? I thought the rhythmic motif of the looky 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 was very strong and very catching. Yeah. Catching? Catchy. I just liked how, for example, in the lyrics and the chorus, yeah, there's like a lot of rhythmic motifs. It was rhythmically active, even if maybe most of the verses weren't necessarily singable, because mm -hmm. it was like a spoken rap. I thought they had an idea of what they wanted to do, and they were pretty successful in creating that. The world is dull yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. I feel like... Reality that's... is... <laughs> Never going to be as yeah. colorful. Again, like, I know, like, you were like, oh yeah, singing's better than the sing speechy stuff. Because, like, you know, we don't get as much melodic content. But, like, the things that, again, the instrumentals were, like, oh, I love so busy. Uh -huh. And, like, they were so melodious. If you listen to the trumpet, like, they've got melody content going. And there's on. nothing, there's nothing really pep, peppy, preppy about their, it's, it's not like the rappers in, uh, shake it off by Taylor Swift. Na 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 na. It's both. Yeah, but but in this one, it's clear that the pitches or the contours, mm -hmm. there's still a melodic quality to it instead of just feeling that. Mm -hmm. It's actually really interesting because um, what happened was that at some point the brass echoed the chorus and they actually approximated the pitches of their voice and mm. made it into a melody, mm. which was really cool. I yeah. thought they had a lot of really interesting vocal harmonies in there, even though there was a lot of, like, not vocal singing harmony things. There, were, there was a lot of just, like, talking and doing whatever. Yeah, I think it's interesting how even when there was, like, a different section where the, you know, they were kind of playing around with the harmonies a little, it was kind of almost like a bridge, but the backgrounds didn't change. I think that's kind of cool that they were able to make that work. Here's what my problem was with it, is that they barely sang. Yeah. It was very speak singing. <clears throat> it and, wasn't and even speak singing, it was, it was just, just like speaking. Thicky, thicky, it, thicky, well, thicky, yeah, like, thicky. not even just the chorus, like the whole thing was basically speaking in a lyrical way. It's like why I don't like, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Yeah, no, it is exactly like that. Mm -hmm. I, I am a firm believer that any chorus that doesn't have singing in it is a terrible chorus. If it's a song that like has Vocals in it. And when you have something like that where not only is it speaking, but it's speaking in a high register at a really just like grating grating pitch, it's like, oh my god, I don't want to listen to it. I mean, I can see how this would be a really cool song live. Yeah. And how it would do really well in those types of things because it's a hype song without any of the like musical part. It's just like a very energized song. And yeah, what do you think of this song compared to the last one and like how Red Velvet is now combining the red and velvet sides? I dig it, you know, because I think that they kept the integrity of the velvet side and they keep the fun, like silliness and the joy of the red side. I like the second one because I feel like it's more upbeat and more catchy. Russian Roulette was really good, but um, yeah, it had like a simple theme in yeah. the chorus that immediately stuck into my head. So yeah. I like it because it's more memorable. 
memorable. <laughs> I'm, hey man, I'm yeah. doing the best I can. No, I agree with you. I thought the second one, while the first one was really good, I thought the second one had a better idea, a better focus, and better execution. How? What do you think of these last two Red Velvet releases compared to like, you know... I don't like I them don't, as yeah. much. I mean, I've always liked their Velvet side especially. Yeah. And some of the Red songs are really good. Based off this, I'm not sure if combining them is going to be something that is going to is going to work. I think it's better to have them separate because it gives you more variety. Combining them is just kind of, you're going to get lost in trying to figure out what your identity is. Mm -hmm. They already had two great identities that were good on their own. I'm not saying that people should always stick to what they know. Like, the, I think change is always good and always But I don't, I think artist. they should go back. But I think this is not the right yeah. kind. This is not the right direction. Do you like this new sound from Red Velvet? I do. I think it definitely, like, I can hear both sides in every song that they've been combined for. I mean, I, I do like the element of like, there's two sides and you kind of know what to expect. Just because like with, with that uh, like idea in place, it's interesting to see what they do with that. Um, I would love to still see like a few songs where they still do just like individual sides. But overall, I think this is a lot more musically complex, interesting. I think it makes for better pop music. Right, and replying to you wanting to hear those, their B-side songs still have Velvet songs and Red Side songs. Cool. It's just for the main releases that it's... Well oh, then perfect. Then I think they handled that super well. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel if you're new. I'm the channel runner and producer of this series. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you're curious to see what else we're going to react to in the future, go ahead and check the description for a bunch of links that I have to playlists and schedules. Also, please check our Patreon if you want to support us. Patrons get access to unedited, full-length reaction videos, access to exclusive content, as well as early access to all the videos posted on here, and more. So thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.